In fact, the word beatnik had no more to do with Jack Kerouac's writing or my music or Alfred's painting than the Beverly Hillbillies did with William Faulkner's writing or Carson McCullough's writing. Well, it was extraordinary because the Jack's narration, thanks to Alfred Leslie taking all of us clowning around and having a good time for 50 hours and not following his direction as much as we should have, or would have been even better, I guess, somehow he managed to get us to do something that he was able to edit so that when Jack saw the final version based on his story, he was able to make this extraordinary spontaneous narration, which actually shows what it was like to hang out with Jack Kerouac, because you hear him as he really was, and you get to see all of us as we really were, and none of us look like beatniks, because there was no such thing as far as we knew until after we had already achieved what we did. Yeah, the mixture reflected our whole era, where Jack, with his love of Baudelaire and Celine and Rambeau, and the musings of Lord Buckley and the great scat and jazz singers and improvising poets. Uh, my love not only of Berlioz and Mozart, the music I was writing for Shakespeare in the Park, but of Charles Mingus, whom I played with the Thelonious Monk and Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker that I was blessed to know, whom Jack also knew. And the painters like Alfred, who had great classical backgrounds and were breaking new frontiers into something that wasn't known. We rejoiced in the treasures of Europe and the treasures of Native American, African American, Hispanic American cultures that at that time were considered to be non-existent. Ralph Ellison's The Invisible Man applied to many of us as well. And the film reflects that enthusiasm and energy in the combination of discipline, European style, and the excitement and the joy of spontaneity. It also shows the young people today that with new technology of digital uh, technology, cameras, and the internet and the World Wide Web, anyone just as we did can make a documentation of their own dreams, their own life, and create their own film on a shoestring and use that energy that we had, not as nostalgia, but to energize all the young people to go for it, to be patient. And if they have to wait 41 years, as we did for this to come out, I always tell young people when I sing the song, Pull My Daisy, it took Mozart till he passed away to get discovered, and it took Moses 40 years to be in the desert. So we're actually right on time to finally have people see Pull My Daisy and see, in fact, there was the beatnik myth had nothing to do with us, and this joyous, brilliant film is an expression of what we were actually like. In effect, we were our own anthropologists without even knowing it. We were a bunch of friends who worked very hard, that had a lot of dreams, and were told, give it up, forget it, it's impossible, be a lab technician or a psychologist or a lawyer, get a regular job and give up those crazy dreams. And there were always older people than Alfred and I, de Kooning and Franz Klein, the painters, Edgar Varese, Dimitri Metropolis, the conductor of the New York Philharmonic, who encouraged us, who gave us hope, who took us under their wings, who gave us energy, who said, you can do it if you work hard, you love what you're doing, you have purity of intent and you really care, something will be good from what you do. Devote your whole life to it. Try for it, go for it. Don't whine, don't complain. Look for the beautiful part. Look for the diamonds in the sidewalk. Every day, because they need desperately to hear that. And as I approach 70, and Alfred and I are just about contemporaries, we're out there lots of times with young kids and they flip out at our energy and enthusiasm because we both love what we do and we grew up with people telling us to dare to pursue those dreams. Sure, because there are people that hate their own children and they have a severe mental problem and they'd be better off seeing a doctor than being in any form of the arts, media, or public life. And I wish <coughs> them well and I have compassion for their mental illness, but there's too much beautiful stuff out here that isn't getting a chance to be seen and we create a landfill culture where we'd have no more room for landfills. Alfred and myself are not landfill artists. We tried and still try to do things that will be beautiful and will make people feel good a hundred years from now. Yes, it's extraordinary. People still care for one another. Those basic humanistic principles have been here since the beginning of time. Every place I toured around the world, I found cultures where people still care about their families, care about one another, 
have compassion and love of concern. When you ask me if I hated or resented people that might do something that's sort of tawdry or crummy, I don't really ever hate them. First of all, we have a First Amendment, which I love, and secondly, hate's bad for your health. So I've always concentrated all my life on trying to look for the positive, beautiful side. And in, as a result of that, when I had a misfortune, all that came back to me enabled our family to get back together. And in fact, I was writing a piece I'm completing for James Galway called Giants of the Night. The first movement honoring the great Charlie Parker, the second Jack Kerouac, and the third Dizzy Gillespie. I'm still honoring the people of my youth and my era for the young people to know of this generation that they can look among their peers and also their contemporaries and find beauty in their own environment. That improvising, as I do when I play jazz and world music, and writing down formally are part of the whole picture of music. Wynton Marcellus, bless his heart, mm -hmm. made that clear to the whole world. And uh, Jack did the same thing in his writing. And Jack's work now is finally being appreciated for its own value. He used to say with a broken heart, when people would ask him questions about being a beatnik or something, don't they ever read my books? The answer is, yes, they do. Jack's the engine that pulled the train, or no one would ever even use the word beat generation. Now he's separate from that. He's being judged as a great American writer like Mark Twain and like the works of Langston Hughes, whom he admired, and Thomas Wolfe, and Ralph Ellison, and William Faulkner, and Carson McCullers, and so many other great writers, he's with the group of writers mm -hmm. whose works and spirit will endure.